Basketball sports include Randy and Juan Jones. Plans out to call to include coming back to get his master's and play his last year as a Hilltopper. Number six, Juan Jones. Next up, number 25, Jair Pritchett. Majoring in business entrepreneurship. Graduation, graduating in December of this year from Wilmington. That's going to be an uncle Mike Pitchett. And playing after college, we need to keep pursuing his dream to play at a high level. Number 25, Jair Pritchett. Next up, number 26, Tyler Bowler. He is major in criminal justice with a minor in addiction study. Graduated in May of 2023. He's from Parkersburg, West Virginia. He has four guys from Amazon, Dad Scott, and girlfriend, uh, Italian Shaver. And he was included in NBC Army Convention, uh, running back in 2021. And after college, he decided between grad school or working as an addiction counselor. Number 26, Tyler Moeller. And next up, number 33, Jerome Gabon Harris. Major in integrated communications and a minor in coaching. Graduated in December of this year. He is from New York. He has one of my dad, Jerome, and Bob Courtney. His plans after college include a beginning career in his major in Chase Pat Money. Number 33, Jerome Harris. Next up, number 45, Jesse Collins. Major in exercise technology. Graduate, graduate from Double Zero Ohio. The best sports for James and Camille Collins. The awards include 2019, 2020, 2021 ABC Academic Honor Roll, and after college, we have to join the United States military. Number 45, Jesse Collins. Next up, number 50, Sam Sucsina. The degree is a master's in coaching leadership, graduating the fall of next year, 2023, in town in Cedar Falls, Iowa. He has scored by Brent and Rhonda Sucsina. And after college, plays the suit career as a firefighter. Number 50, Sam Sucsina. Next up, number 56. Charles Whitney. 
Awards is on second to all MC 2022. I get the ball in the spring of 2021. He captained a four-year starter and after college, is the job in and get his CPA license. Jacob, if you can go on broadcast today, could you please share that? I'm very good at picking up men's digits. Okay. And finally, we have so, I'll try and work it in. Dominant, middle, injury exercise physiology, graduates in the summer of 2023 from Windsor Heights, West Virginia, at the Stone Church, Doug Bill, and after college, he's taking his chiropractic school. Number 77, Dominic Bill. And let's give a big round of applause to all the people that have been here.
Good, whatever, yep. It's the football season finale here on the Hilltop as West Liberty takes on Frostburg State. First, the proud sponsors of today's broadcast on the Mountain East Digital Network. Main Street Bank, Dr. John P. and Mrs. McCullough, Panhandle Cleaning and Restoration, Dr. Clyde and Mrs. Campbell, Belmont Savings Bank, Alex E. Paris Contracting, Commonwealth Financial, IBEW Local 141, Wheeling, West Virginia. Calcaruth Roofing and Sheet Metal. Undo's Restaurant. Gil Allum CPA. Generations Restaurant and Pub. WVU Medicine Wheeling Hospital. The Store. The Dirty Dog Tavern. And Karen Allum Realty. The Hilltoppers come in 4 and 6, 3 and 6 in the Mountain East Conference with Frostburg State visits with a 7-3 and three record, 6-3 and three in the conference. I'm Jacob Davey, joined by the coach Lynn Allum here on the Mountain East Digital Network for the season finale. Hilltoppers put up a season high, 32 points in the last outing out in West Virginia State, but came up just short, coach. Yeah, it was an exciting game, and they had a season high in total offense as well with over 400 yards, but... Um, Every game's different depending upon who you play, and today we're looking at one of the best defenses in the uh, Mountain East Conference with Frostburg, who only gives up about 15 points a game. Yeah, speaking of Frostburg, on a three-game win streak entering today, allowed just seven points over those two games. Season high 58 came in the Week 9 win over Alderson Broadus, then a 37 nothing route of Wesleyan last week. Right, and you're at the mercy sometimes of where people fall on your schedule. So Frostburg, late in the season, they got uh, A.B. and West Virginia Wesley, and no disrespect, but two teams that have struggled to find wins this season. And West Liberty's uh, schedule got very more difficult down the stretch. So season finale, um, Division II football, this is where injuries really come into play and your depth, and uh, let's hope West Liberty can finish this thing off with, uh, with an impressive win at home. Yeah, looking to regroup. They started the season four and three through seven weeks and then suffered three losses the last three. The last home game was 42-21 loss to Wheeling and then two straight ones on the road. Yeah, it's they had a tough trip to uh, Pembroke who plays really well at home and West Virginia State's having a good season. And we've talked about this so many times. The middle of this league, there is so much parity. And West Liberty, uh, I think if they could go back and, and wish anything to be different, it's just a little bit more consistent uh, consistency. They play in spurts. There's quarters where we look like we're as good as any team in the league, and then we have some quarters where we have a tendency to turn the ball over. So today it's just not beating yourselves and the defense stepping up a little bit more and finding a way to pull this out. Yeah, you spoke of the parity in the Mountain East Conference. The look at the conference standings heading into the final week of the season. Notre Dame and Concord are at the top 8-2. and two. Notre Dame 8-1 and one in the Mountain East, though, have the lead in the conference. Frostburg State Charleston tied for third at 6-3 and three in the conference. You have then a load of teams in the middle, as you said, tied for fifth. Glenville State, West Virginia State, Wheeling, and Pembroke, all 5-4 and four in the conference. And at the bottom, Fra Fairmont State, Wesleyan, and Alderson Broaders are underneath West Liberty. And it's just been, it's been an unusual season. And I talk about this all the time, but even take our games out of it, you'll see quality teams, uh, Charleston, and, and here's probably the best story I can say about our conference. Charleston and Concord in back-to-back -back weeks each scored like 130 points apiece, and they were both one and one at the end of that. So uh, there's no rhyme or reason. Pembroke loses 70 to 21, and then they'll come back and beat somebody really good, like Wheeling on the road. So you just never know. 
Yeah, and a look at the series history. It's a brief one, but a little bit dated one for the Bobcats and the Hilltoppers. First meeting back in 1965 was a Hilltopper victory. All-time 3-4-1 and one are West Liberty against Frostburg State, but lost the last four, including a 56-3 loss last year in the season finale. Yeah, and again, these season finales, that's what makes it so interesting. Frostburg... Uh, had a really, really good season. Uh, you know, they were vying for a regional playoff bid if they would have been eligible. And uh, we were a little beat up and went down there, and it did not go well. But uh, Frostburg, I think, has been – and I even talked to their athletic director about this at our MEC meetings a couple weeks ago – how surprised we all were, now maybe not them, that – they were this good in football this early, making the transition from Division Three to Division Two. But people have said if you look at the quality Division Three football teams, the teams that are at the top, they are really darn good. So uh, Frostburg, they're, they're just been a really, really fundamentally sound, disciplined uh, just a consistent team, and that's the reason they've won a lot of games since they've joined this league. Last thing before we had to break, before kickoff, Coach, uh, keys to the game for the Hilltoppers to snap this losing streak down the year? Well, I think it's going to be the same keys that I say almost every week. You just cannot turn the ball over, and you can't turn it over, which leads directly to points. You know, scooping scores, pick six, whatever, and then – the defense stepping up and forcing turnovers. Uh, the West Liberty defense at one point was first or second in the nation and turnovers forced. But that's dried up a little bit as of late. So a way to make that big play, which has a tendency to turn games. Yeah, the Hilltopper defense, as you said, ranked near the top. Then went two straight weeks without a turnover. Got one last week. Cam Rice forced a fumble, set up a Hilltopper score early in the West Virginia State game. We will head to break before kickoff here in West Liberty. Bobcats and Hilltoppers coming up next. Bring uh, on our podcast this week, and uh, maybe it was a Jedi mind trick. He was talking that he's an offensive coach, and uh, he tends to like to take the ball, which I had told him he's in a minority. Very few coaches are doing that, but maybe the weather has something to say. Uh, it's a cold, rainy day here on the hilltop. Yeah, so that's a weird stat. Four straight coin toss wins. If you look at it, it's the seventh coin toss win for West Liberty. The first three. They chose to receive, and now the last four, they've all chose to kick off. <laughs> a little change of thinking for Coach Wiley. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, there's there's a wind. It's not an overpowering wind today, and it can get windy up here. But I just kind of got a feel for today. I, th I think we're going to play well. Senior Day festivities for the Hilltoppers. Honored a handful of graduating seniors for their contributions to the program before today's game look at the coaching staff coach Wiley for the Hilltoppers in his 18th season longest tenured coach in the MEC facing off against first year head coach Eric Wagner 
after spending a couple years as an assistant on the Bobcat staff, promoted to head coach this year. Yeah, their former coach, boy, was he a good one, and I believe he's in southern Utah maybe. Is that where he went? But uh, they just got, they've just got a really, really good football program and a program that's probably going to be a force to be reckoned with here for years. Just about ready for kickoff in the season finale for West Liberty. Looking to snap this three-game losing streak. Justin Kaplan out to kick it off for the Hilltoppers. Justin Kaplan. And the deep pass for Crossburn. On two deep, number 15, Max Davis, number 16, George Kaplan sends it, bounces at the 15 and will roll out. So good starting field position for Frostburg State to open it. And not a perfect result, but Coach Wiley also said on the podcast that they definitely weren't going to kick to their kid today. So I don't know if you wanted to roll out of bounds, but uh, this guy's special. Offense comes out for Frostburg State, led by quarterback Graham Walker, sophomore. So one of the best running teams in the MEC, Josh Maxwell and Sean Aaron rank in the top 10 of the MEC in rushing. It's an opening handoff goes for about six. Another unusual stat, Jacob, about this game or this season is I believe West Liberty leads the MEC in time of possession. That is correct, yes. And uh, normally teams that, that lead in that stat are winning a lot of football games. Yep, West Liberty comes into it just under 33 minutes a game in time of possession. First pass goes incomplete, but a late flag comes in. I think they're going to argue that's not even a catchable ball. We're going to call pass interference against the Hilltoppers and move it up to the 47-yard line nearing midfield on the opening drive. Jordan Demas, the Hilltopper, called for the penalty. Handoff goes left side. Breaking it loose along the sideline and tripped up at the 30. Goes Maxwell. Kind of sealed that edge. West Liberty had one guy out there and he couldn't make the tackle. And hence the guy breaks off a probably a 22 yard run there. Just a minute into this game and Frostburg State threatening. Last week the Hilltoppers gave up a touchdown on the opening drive early to the Yellow Jackets of West Virginia State. As Maxwell goes again and bounces out left side. Knocked out of bounds just before the end zone. It'll be at the five yard line. First and goal for the Bobcats. Yeah, back to back. Really big gains, and Toppers got their backs to the, the goal line here. First and goal from the five. To 
to Maxwell again, this time into a whole host of hilltoppers. Gets a couple yards, though. It's a good football term you use there, host of toppers. That goes way back, Jacob. I'm 180 years old, and it predated me. Walker in the shotgun now on second and goal from the two in motion. Hands it to the receiver and goes in for the Bobcat score. Little jet sweep there. Jordan Marcucci puts the Bobcats on the board on the first possession. Go right down the field. And you were right. They scored uh, last week. It was about 40 seconds we were down 7 nothing. This so one goes six plays, 65 yards over just about two and a half minutes, and the Hilltoppers trail early, 7 0 Frostburg. Disasters happen. Pick the team that takes care of them all. Powered by offices in Wheeling, Morgantown, and Pittsburgh. Panhandle Cleaning and Let's see if they can. Bobcats score early on six plays, 65 yards. And now the Hilltoppers will have a chance to answer. Ben Turner and Sean Stevens back deep. Kick goes to Stevens, picked up at the 15. Makes a man miss and comes up, knocked out of bounds at the 36. Good field position for the Hilltoppers to start. Their kick return unit's been pretty good all season. Stevens, that was his 28th kick return of the year, averages just under 22 yards of return. First and 10, starting 34. Rudy Garcia, it's been a little. Jekyll and Hyde, his first halves have been incredible this season. Opening play, back to pass, and now we'll take it himself. For a couple of yards and moves to second down. And six. Garcia, the starter, now nine straight games to end the season. And he's sacked there on the option, decided to keep it. Yeah, a little read there and pulled it and didn't fool the Frostburg defense. And this is where you do not want to be, is in third and long, third and nine here. Especially after such a quick score by Frostburg State, you can't go three and out, you would think. Garcia back to pass. Looking left. Throw and caught. That is Rashawn Harvey. 
He's had a couple of big games the last two, over 100 in each of the last two contests on the road, including a season high, 142 last week off 12 catches. Yeah, and, and that's a throw that's been there most of the season. Now Garcia hands to Wimbish for the first time. Across midfield. Finally brought down by the Bobcats. Good run on first down. One of the reasons was Liberty's so good with time of possession is when Bish uh, has had a pretty good year running the football. Yep, been over 100 yards three times, 880 yards on the season. Now he'll catch one from Garcia for a first down and a couple more inside the 40 to the 38 first down Hilltoppers. There's a well-designed uh, little screen there and Frostberg bit and sent the pressure and Blocked well and moved the chains. Play action. Garcia on the slant across the middle. TJ Griffin moves the sticks again. Nice little slant, accurate throw. And Wimbish tripped up in the backfield. Loss of a couple brings up second down and long. Behind the chains and you don't have to get it all back on this play. Let's see if they can uh, get about half of it at least. Garcia looking to the sideline for the offense. Play clock down to five. Gets the snap off. Looking left, lobs it for Griffin. That's I think he got it. It's a catch down to the one, TJ Griffin. That's one of the better catches we've seen all season. That's a Belmont Savings Bank uh, play of the game type little fade route down the, the sideline and a fingertip. That's the definition of a fingertip grab. Garcia lofted it up there and Griffin going to work. Brings the Hilltoppers down to the one looking to tie it up. Wimbish, Wimbish. stuffed. Short goal line. I think Quincy may have uh, missed a hole there. Not that there was a hole. If he could have just taken that to the right a touch, I think he could have gotten in. Wimbish has six rushing scores. And it looks like he's in the backfield. He'll just take the snap. Directly and run right in, Wimbish. Don't know if we've seen that this year, the little wildcat. Hilltoppers an extra point away from tying it up. They answer the Frostburg State opening drive and with a score of their own. That's a great answer against a, a pretty good defense in the league. Kaplan on to look to tie it. Puts it through, and we're all tied. After each team gets a drive, they find the end zone. It's 7-7 here in the season finale. Every basket. Every touchdown. Every goal. And every stay. 
It's possible because of you. Help our student athletes compete in the classroom and for championships by joining the Hilltopper Athletic Club. Panhandle difference. We were very fortunate to have worked with Panhandle Cleaning and Restoration. The team that we worked with was extremely professional. They were flexible and very receptive to our needs during that difficult time. And it gave us uh, the opportunity to open very quickly and get our casino up and running for our customers. Hilltoppers go 10 play 66 yards to tie us up at 7. A couple big plays on that drive, Coach. Well, the one third down play was the big one. Uh, the out to Harvey here on the sideline and gave him a new set of downs. And then they hit the slant and then got the fade down the, the corner. Impressive, impressive drive. Another nice little wildcat play call to top it off. Yeah, I haven't seen that all season. Nothing like saving it for the season finale. <laughs> hey, Kaplan will go out of bounds again. Prosperk State will get it to 35 again after both kickoffs from Justin Kaplan today go out of bounds. Let's see if uh, West Liberty can contain the run on this possession. Pretty easy drive for Frostburg after they received the opening kickoff. Four of the five plays on that opening drive were runs. And that's going to be a completed pass. <laughs> one of the. <laughs> Walker in the shotgun with Maxwell behind him. Hand it off. Stopped at the 40. Third down at five for Frostburg State. First third down, I believe they're facing. Today. Yeah, good job against the run there. Nothing to be found. And let's see if the toppers can get off the field. Maxwell looking left, and that's the catch. Little back shoulder fade down the left sideline. The topper defender couldn't find the ball. And Frostburg picks up a really big play on third down. Brings them all the way into Hilltopper territory at the 36. Maxwell left side. They've had success running to the left today. This handoff goes to Sean Aaron, bouncing out left side. Right at the first down mark, and now they'll wave on the sticks. First down 
Frostburg State. Another one, this one, bouncing out right side. Aaron, flag comes out. It's usually where it's a hold, we'll see. Officials come together to discuss two flags on the play. So offsetting penalties and just do first and ten all over again from the twenty five. See if West Liberty can do something about this rushing attack. Maxwell lofting and <laughs> Stevens just wasn't ready for it, I don't think. Well, that would have been a gift. That's a pick six with his speed. Stevens leads the country with eight interceptions. I was looking for his ninth. It's twice in this game. We got the pressure on the quarterback early, and it was a wounded duck throw, and we couldn't find a football. Aaron up the middle. Makes it third and short for Frostburg State. Let's see if they elect to maybe try to run this football to pick up the chains or maybe go play action and see if they can get West Liberty to bite. Aaron's going to get the first down. Fast moving quarter. We're already down to 313 here left in the first quarter. And Frostburg is in a first and goal. With all the running attempts, that'll drain the clock pretty quickly. Up to 10 for Frostburg State. First and goal at the 10, and an 11th handoff goes for nine yards, tripped up at the one. Yeah, they're controlling the line of scrimmage right now. That was a massive hole. Maxwell gets the handoff and goes in. Frostburg State, two for two on drives, getting into the end zone, and they take the 13-7 lead. Just West Liberty's inability to stop the run at this point. Dane Kuntz with the left foot makes it 14-7. Back in a moment for Hilltopper's second drive. 
your bank offered new checking and savings accounts with a very low balance required, online bill pay and debit cards issued right away. I would like that. What if that bank had extended hours every business day and were open on Saturdays and most holidays? That's incredible. And if all their accounts had low fees or no fees? That's money in the bank. The right bank. Open your checking and savings account at Main Street Bank. You deserve a bank this good. Grab a meal at the Dirty Dog Tavern. Located at the top of the hill in West Liberty, Dirty Dog Tavern offers a family-friendly atmosphere with a full menu as well as adult beverages. Catch the game during weekday happy hours, play games like darts or pool, or enjoy the deck with your family and friends. Open Monday through Saturday at 4 p.m. and Sunday from noon to 8. Come to the Dirty Dog Tavern in the town of West Liberty, a proud supporter of Hilltopper Athletics. Short kickoff for Frostburg State. Ben Turner comes up, snags it at the 25. Pushed out of bounds at the 40, where the Hilltoppers will start. Trailing by seven. Nice return by Ben Turner. He's played well the last couple weeks. and West Liberty has great starting field position here at the 40. Yeah, Turner's seen a larger role in the Hilltopper offense. Had a season-long 65-yard touchdown catch last week down in Institute. Opening play, a screen pass. Can't be handled on the far side, and it'll be second and ten. Those are the plays that make you hold your breath. They kind of jumped that route and fortunately didn't uh, secure the football. Play clock down to single digits. Garcia in the shotgun gets it off with five. Slant to Griffin. Cross midfield. And to the 45 goes TJ Griffin. Another slant catch for. You know, I've talked about this several times. It's just how good this offense has looked in the first halves of football games this year. And Garcia looks like an all conference quarterback at times. And Wimbish in the Wildcat again. He'll take it and bounce out left side. No gain. Actually, we'll go for a loss of two. There's the one downside. You go to the Wildcat and your wide your quarterback plays wide receiver, but he's not going to be a great blocker out there. And he couldn't seal the edge with a the block there. And Quincy gets uh, tackled for a loss. Wimbish up the gut. Breaks through a couple of tackles and it'll be third and short at the 35. Pretty impressive 11 yard run right there. Yards after contact. Let's see if he just gets under center here and gets a first down. Quick QB sneak for Garcia. Gets the first down. Garcia. West Liberty's been good at that this season, too, in these short yard situations where they run Rudy Garcia right under center and just takes the snap, and that's worked almost every time this season. The only time it's ever not worked is a couple times uh, we get a motion penalty out of it. But if we execute to formation, it's worked almost every time. First down at the 31 for the Hilltoppers. Garcia all alone. Pass right side. It's caught by Griffin. Another accurate throw there. Griffin up to three catches. All quick slants today. Looks like Frostburg took it there at the end of the quarter here. 
That'll do it for the opening 15 minutes. Hilltoppers driving, looking to tie it up at 14. Back for the second after this. Disasters happen. Pick the team that takes care of them all. Powered by offices in Wheeling, Morgantown, and Pittsburgh, Panhandle Cleaning and Restoration is ready to handle any size emergency at a moment's notice. We have the right people, knowledge, and equipment to respond 24 hours a day. I'm Roger Wiley. When disaster strikes your home or business, tell your insurance provider you prefer the restoration company the Hilltoppers call. Panhandle Cleaning and Restoration. What are you working for? Do you want to pursue your athletic potential while earning a degree that will benefit you for a lifetime? Do you want to play at the highest level in your sport? Do you want to be a champion? That's what the 12 proud members of the Mountain East Conference are advancing toward every day. Providing opportunities and pursuing excellence. The Mountain East Conference. Hilltoppers on the charge as we open the second quarter. We'll flip sides. Have it at the 27 second and six. Both teams have looked tremendous on offense today. Both teams just about at 100 yards total offense. West Liberty at 99. Wimbish will get him over 100 and more as he breaks loose for the first down inside the 20. Little wildcat again. That's the third time this game. And they didn't even tip me off. You think somebody would have said something to me this week? Coach McGee breaking out everything in the playbook here in the season finale. Play action Garcia to Griffin. Another slant. Griffin already up over 60 yards. Game high five catches so far. Garcia looking to Wimbish in the corner, knocked away. Looks like there's a flag out there. Oh, nothing. Now they're talking to the Frostbury State side. Probably whether they want to accept their decline, the penalty against the Hilltoppers. It's going to be declined, looks like. It's an interesting call. I think, I don't know if it's 50 50. I'm guessing maybe 60 40. Most coaches would have taken that, but I can definitely see why they elected not to. You know, are you going to give them two downs or one here to pick up the first down? Right. Especially here deep inside the red zone. And the call turns out to work for Frostburg State as they force fourth down for the Hilltoppers. will bring out Kaplan and the kicking unit. Prosperic State was second in red zone defense coming into it, only allowing 68% of the drives against them score. Now 
Now Kaplan on. Looking for three from 31. Almost blocked. He gets it off and through. Justin Kaplan from 31 yards makes it 14-10. Frostburg stayed out in front here early in the second quarter. You going? The store in West Liberty. The store is open seven days a week with daily lunch specials, hot food and cold sandwiches, Patsy's Pizza, and a wide selection of chips, pop, and other snacks, as well as household goods and hygiene products. We've also got a wide selection of beer and an ATM. Stop on in and check out the store, located at the top of the hill in the town of West Liberty, a proud supporter of Hilltopper Athletics. BSB tip of the day. Bank with a company that pays you, depending on how you use your checking account. It's Kasasa Cash Back. It's a totally real thing, and we could totally pay you money. That's Kasasa Cash Back at Belmont Savings Bank. Hilltoppers pick up three off the foot of Justin Kaplan, and it's 14 10. A lot of offense in the game to this point. Oh, Kaplan out to kick it off. He sent two out of bounds in two kickoffs today. To keep this one inbounds and set Frostburg State back a little bit on their starting field possession. Just going to be squibbed up the middle. Picked up at the 30. Ahead a couple yards to the 38. Bobcat out. offense comes out for their third drive, scored two touchdowns in their first two attempts. Stopped right at the line of scrimmage. Taken down by Delano Marcellus of the Hilltoppers. Good stop that time. Tried to bounce it out left as they've been doing here throughout the first quarter. Good adjustment by the Hilltoppers for this third drive. Flag comes out. Going to be a false start against the Bobcats. Back them up five on second down. Second of 14 for Frostburg. Walker looks left. It's caught and right away taken down by Jordan Demas. Nobody full there. The toppers forced their first third and long in this game, extremely long, and just get off the field and give a well functioning offense the ball again. Prosperic State two for two in third down attempts. This game. Hilltoppers looking for their first stop. Confusion on the Bobcat side. It'll be a timeout. First of the game. Prosperic State. Ending their season here with two road games. Wrapped up home play two weeks ago. 
the win over Alderson brought us. You know, they lost by one to Concord. They lost by one to Pembroke. And they lost by four to Wheeling. So they have three losses by a total of six points. So very well could be 10-0 and 0 if you look at it. They tied for the Mountain East Conference regular season title last year. And they have a win over Notre Dame this year. You know, they beat a Notre Dame team that if they win today, looks like they're going to find a way into the playoffs. Back at it, third and 14. That's a sack for the Hilltoppers. It's a big hit. Mikey Agasiva getting to the quarterback. Still have a light rain here. It's not coming down as heavy as it was earlier. Now Stevens back for the punt return. First punt of the afternoon for either side. Stevens will call for the fair catch and just lets it bounce. Be downed at the 34 where the Hilltoppers will start. Solid field position again. Let's see if West Liberty can mount a, a TD drive and take the lead here in the first half. But first, we'll head to break at the media timeout, 10-19 to play in the second quarter. West Liberty trailing 14-10. They'll probably never know about his thousands of hours of on-the-job training. There you go, Daddy. Or that he spent as much time in the classroom as someone with a master's degree. You and I know he's one of the experts when it comes to electricity. Part of a team committed to doing the job right. They call him Dad. You call him the electrician right down the street. IBEW, the power professionals in your neighborhood. The Panhandle Difference. I immediately called Panhandle Cleaning and Restoration to see if they could clean and restore my home. Not only did they do that, but they even made it more beautiful than it was before the fire. If everyone ever has a tragedy like ours, I highly recommend you call Panhandle Cleaning and Restoration. Back on the hilltop, the hilltoppers will look to take their first lead of the game. Scored on each of their first two drives. A touchdown by Wimbish. And a 31-yard field goal from Kaplan. Gives them 10 points. Three receivers on the top of the screen. Garcia will look that way to a cutting Ben Turner for the first down. Another slant. That ball had some heat on it and that was not an easy catch and Ben Turner uh, diving shoestring grab. Caught it at the 46. He slid all the way past midfield on this wet turf but down right where he hits the ground at the 46. Garcia will pump fake and take it himself for about seven. Good decision there. Had a rushing touchdown last week. He's tied, well, was tied heading in to the game with Wimbish. Had six touchdowns on the year rushing is Garcia. A dual threat quarterback.
Lofting it far sideline for Turner, just a little too far. That would have had to have been a perfect throw. Bring up third and three. Celebrity two of three on third downs. I think a bobcat jumped and Garcia will push forward and get the first down. Flag on the far sideline. Garcia would have picked it up anyway, but we'll take the extra couple yards, uh, the penalty yards. Garcia did a good job there making that one guy miss. That was potential a tackle for loss. But to no avail because they jumped anyway. Now Griffin coming through. Stopped right away. Lots of less than a yard. Got a pretty good wind blowing right now. Looks like right in the face of the hilltoppers. Garcia back looking right. A little too much on that one as well. Titus Goldson, the intended receiver. Another big third down in this game, third and 11. Garcia steps up. That's going to be picked off. Jeremiah Baxter on the interception for Frostburg State. Not the worst, though, on third down. Would have punted it away anyway. Yeah, it probably cost yourself 10 yards with the interception there. Like I said, there's a pretty good breeze. It's a wet, rainy day, and there's a pretty good breeze. Those throws are not easy. So Walker and the offensive crew come out again. Now hand it off to Maxwell. Cuts it in half on first down. They ran left again. That's kind of been their operating procedure today. Now we'll look to pass left. Diving attempt for the one-handed grab incomplete. Intended. 488. Well, if you look at it here, Coach, uh, no wonder they're running left. Their junior left tackle, Gottlieb Idez, is invited to the Reese Senior Bowl. It's pretty impressive. Pretty darn impressive. There's a lot of talent in that game. Let's see if they run left here. It's third and four on a rainy, windy day, and they've been effective running the football. Let's see if West Liberty can run blitz here, maybe, and Pass was way behind the intended receiver and fourth down. 
So two straight stops for the Hilltopper defense after letting up two scores to open it. Yeah, they actually ran a little um, screen pass type there. They just back got out of the – ran a little route and sat down in the middle field. He was actually wide open. The quarterback uh, threw it about five yards wide. Sends the punt away. Stevens will just let it roll. And it was a good punt all the way down to the 16. Can you do that quick math, Coach? <laughs> I can't do the quick math because I'm just thinking, and that's one of those on a windy day. If you can somehow catch that out of the air, you're going to save yourself about 20 yards. But it's amazing, especially when you're playing in the north like we are. You get into these uh, mid-November games, and this is the what you don't want to see. You don't want to see the the weather hit you. And it's not awful today, meaning it's probably about 40 degrees, but it's windy and rainy. Wimbish takes the handoff right at the line of scrimmage, stopped second and ten for the Hilltoppers. Second and ten, six minutes and twenty four seconds left. Play clock down to ten. Garcia in the shotgun. Wimbish to his right. Trips at the bottom of the screen and he'll look to the left side. Where Jerome Harris was all alone. Pass was a little bit wide and third down and ten for the Hilltoppers. Let's see what they dial up here. Four receivers spread out. Wimbish in the backfield. Garcia tried to step up and was swallowed up by a pair of Bobcats. And the punt unit will come out. Yeah, they brought the the heat there nowhere for Rudy Garcia to go. And so hopefully we can get this snap off. You know, I'm always constantly looking at these flags and the wind has died, so chance to not kick into the wind here. Matt Curry out the punt for first time for the Hilltoppers. And it's blocked. Still got away a little bit, but tipped up and will be stopped at the 35. Frostburg State powers through and gets a hand on the punt. And just so you People don't think I'm lying. You can see that flag. As soon as the snap goes, uh, it kicked back up. But that one was blocked anyway. West Liberty's probably fortunate to get it out to the 35. A tall task for the Hilltopper defense now. Looking for a third straight stop. The Frostburg State starts at the Hilltopper 35. The opening handoff will push him back. Three yards. As Zach Dixon gets into the backfield for the tackle. If they can somehow find a way to keep them uh, to three or less points on this drive. Preferably no points, but uh, it's been a pretty good football game to this point. Another good tackle by Dixon. Not letting Maxwell go anywhere. Third and 11. 
potentially two down territory here when you're out at the 37 yard line. Kicker Dane Koontz has hit a 51 yarder though for Bobcats and the wind in their favor potentially could go in the decision making and they'll have to make that decision as the third down pass goes incomplete. Would be a 54 yard try. They're going to do it, I think, unless they're going to punt it away. So the offense goes off the field and they are going to punt it, Koontz. Probably playing a little uh, weather related field position here. Koontz last punt went for 54 yards. Won't need all that this time. He kicks it away from the 50. And the Bobcats special teams get right down inside the five, stop it at the two. It's about as well as you can play that. That's the way you design it up. And it doesn't surprise me that they played field position there. That's kind of a miserable day for offenses throwing the ball. And you got a four-point lead. And looks like they made a good decision there. Following the West Liberty women's team online right now, and they're in overtime. Back to back overtime games to start the season. 87 87. Toppers see if they can uh, pull this out in overtime. Busy weekend in Hill Topper Athletics. Wrestling in action today, basketball, both men's and women's. Men will play tonight at home. And a flag comes out. Might back the Hilltoppers up even more. It's a one yard penalty and one and a half yard penalty. It moves it to the one and a half yard line. There's not a lot of plays in your playbook at the one and a half yard line. Just going to hand it to Wimbish. And we'll gain him some room off the end zone, so up to the eight-yard line. Yeah, that's a, it's a major win on first down. The offensive line opened up a really nice hole. He was untouched until he got three or four yards past the line of scrimmage. Wimbish again, bouncing around and tackled for a third and short. Third and two at the 11. Hilltoppers own end. Just over three minutes to play in the opening half, trailing by four to Frostburg State. Griffin goes in motion. Flag comes out on the far side. Pass caught by Ben Turner. Across the 30. We'll see if it stands or comes back. Perfect play. Unfortunately, the offsides goes against West Liberty and third and eight. So the big play from Turner gets negated by the penalty. Back deep in their own end are the Hilltoppers, third down. Garcia back to pass. And that's going to be a Bobcat touchdown. The sack, fumble, score. 
What a turn of events. Yeah, it's, it's kind of summed up the season. That's the type of play. They just play so well for extended periods of time, and then it's those type of plays. We talked about it in the pregame. Turnovers and turnovers that lead directly to points. It's hard to overcome that. Koontz is on and makes it 21-10. Frostburg State with the defensive score. Extends the lead to two possessions. Hilltoppers will get it back after this. Joe's Catering, family owned since 1953. With four newly remodeled catering facilities throughout the Ohio Valley, Undo's can accommodate banquets from 25 to 700 guests. Undo's caters weddings, picnics, corporate events, holiday events, and job site drop-offs for the construction and oil and gas industry. Call 304-233-5566 today. Undo. BSV tip of the day, your bank should have a good rewards program. Casasa Tunes gives you rewards for iTunes, Google Play, and Amazon, depending on how you use your checking account. That's Casasa Tunes at Belmont Savings Bank. Hilltoppers will get it back after the sack fumble score right on the top of the end zone for Frostburg State. It's the Hilltopper's second turnover of the afternoon. Garcia, an interception earlier, then the fumble there on third down. Almost got out of that deep hole in their own end, but a third down penalty sent them right back to it. And looking for an answer. The kickoff goes to Ben Turner. Quality return to the 35. Two minutes, 10 seconds to play. In the opening half, it's a big possession headed into the locker room. Yeah, plenty of time. You know, time's not the issue. You got three timeouts left and 210 in college football. That's an eternity. Yep, Coach Wiley has kept hold of all three timeouts. Four receivers spread out. Two at the top, two at the bottom for West Liberty. Garcia in the back. He'll look right. Throw for Harvey. Goes long. Second down. It's the one play that West Liberty just hasn't been able to execute much this season are the deep routes. They've been incredibly good on the the outs and the slants. Wimbish on the little screen. Tackled right away. He'll dive ahead for one. Frostburg's using their timeouts on defense here as they stop the clock with 155 left in the second quarter. Trying to get a one final possession are the Bobcats. West well, Liberty women are up 96-89 with 216 left in overtime. Talk is busy week. Uh, West Liberty women's volleyball team also in action this week down at uh, the MEC tournament hosted by the University of Charleston, which is where the women are also playing basketball today. West Liberty women uh, in the quarters beat West Virginia State, who is a regionally ranked squad. And West Liberty went into that seventh in the region. They take eight teams. So uh, I think there's a solid shot of them securing an at-large bid. Selection show will be this Sunday, 10.30. Set the alarm clock. We have to take a little nap before that one. You're still young. It's old people like me that <laughs> we may be setting the alarm clock. But uh, And that would be historic for uh, Roddy Shank and her team. Uh, when somebody's never made the regional NCAA tournament, 
in volleyball. So uh, let's keep our fingers crossed. Hope that it happens and be a historic, uh, historic happening. Third down and eight. Hilltoppers back on the field. Now another timeout. This one by Frostburg State. Final timeout at a half. That's one you don't want to take if you're Frostburg. But again, in college football, with it stops after every first down, a minute 55 is a long time, which is where the clock's sitting right now. It'll be third and eight for West Liberty at the 37, their own end. All three timeouts still in the bag for the Hilltoppers, so if they can pick this one up, they'll be in good position. And the only reason that I was talking about Frostburg using all their timeouts, including one there where you just never want to have to use consecutive ones without a snap, is they're a running football team. So uh, a minute 55 and a couple timeouts, uh, you can incorporate the run. Here comes the flag. It's going to be a false start against the Hilltoppers. Back them up five more. Now that one hurts because now the decision is, are you going to throw the football here? Yeah, or stop it. it chance of an incompletion stopping the clock for yeah, Frostburg. There's a big difference between third and eight and third and 13. Play clock down to three. Garcia gets it off and now will just run it himself up the middle. Not going to be enough. Taken down at the 40. And see, I kind of like I kind of like that call because on third and 13, if you throw it down the field, you know, it's 13 yards to pick up a first down. If you don't complete it, it stops the clock. So they can milk this down to about a minute seven before he even punts it. And Frostburg sitting with zero timeouts. Matt Curry, the redshirt freshman, in the punt for the Hilltoppers. Prosper State, almost another block. That one gets off and fair caught at the 30. So 105 to play, Frostburg State out of timeouts, had 21-10. Hillstoppers trying to keep it at this margin, heading into the break. In the backfield. Oh, there's a great tackle. Senna. That is a great tackle against a talented running back because if that tackle's not made, he may have had some running room out there. Now the Hilltoppers take a timeout. Maybe Coach Weiler trying to get one back. Well, yeah, he's saying it's second and 15 with his timeouts. So you're hoping you get a stop and maybe get a somewhat short field to work with. Officials add four seconds to the game clock to 54. At least maybe give Stevens a chance at a, at a punt return late.
Prospect State with 92 rushing yards in the game so far. 72 from Maxwell, 23 from Aaron. Hilltoppers are over 100 in the passing game. We're back in action. And another run. And a flag comes out on the near side. Hilltoppers take the timeout. Well, they might not have to if it's a penalty here. Official still discussing the call. Holding against Frostburg State, moves them back to the 15. Second and 25. Yeah, see, that was the perfect world for West Liberty. You don't have to use your timeout, and it backs them up 10 more yards. Another handoff. Stuffed right away. Marcellus. First on the scene. Takes him down. Now the Hilltoppers take their second timeout before the third and 25 for the Bobcats. Probably another run coming up. Just concede the the third down for Frostburg Yeah, State. because West Liberty's sitting with one timeout left, so conventional wisdom. How often are you going to pick up a third and 25? So maybe a draw play here. You force West Liberty to take that final timeout, but now you know why Coach Wiley elected to take that timeout after first down wet conditions they're backed up on their own 15 so maybe he can force a punt and as you mentioned stevens gets any return at all he might be looking at points then to half here and cut it to a one score game and the hilltoppers will receive the second half kickoff after deferring the coin toss a long run on third down gets them back within the sticks but not enough Big run from Maxwell gets him out of there. Deep end and yeah, that hurt. That definitely flipped that game plan a little bit. West Liberty women are in double overtime, 96 apiece. Dan Coots, the junior punter, out to kick it away for Frostburg State. Put one over 50 yards earlier in this game and then put one inside the five. His next attempt. Launches this one away. Stevens muffs it. And then is able to jump back on and recover. Hilltoppers will get the possession at the 35 with 27 seconds left. That was almost bad. Yeah, that, uh, and that's what makes this game so interesting. There's so many chess moves to be made. And heck, a minute ago, we're thinking they're going to punt from their own 10. And now West Liberty's uh, almost fumbled a muff to punt at the 35. <laughs> 
27 seconds. Rudy Garcia in the back play clock down to five. Still looking to the sideline. Goes back. Escapes right. Looking and the throw will be incomplete to Harvey. It's hit the ground. Jeremiah Baxter, defensive back for Frostburg stays. I thought he picked that up right out of Harvey's hands. Second down, Garcia with 20 seconds in the half. Rolls out left, down the sideline, throws it away. Third and ten. Yeah, I don't be surprised to see a running play here and get to the half. You don't want to punt again. It's going to be a pass rolling out and throwing it away. The Hilltoppers will have to punt. Nine seconds. Frostburg State had a blocked punt earlier. And they've penetrated this Hilltopper line on pretty much every punt attempt so far. Matt Curry gets it away. Fair caught. We'll have one more play. Three seconds left in the first half. Well, we didn't think there would be this many possession changes <laughs> in the final minute, huh? Yeah, this is this is crazy. They're just going to come out and knee it and take it to the half. Frostburg State ahead 21-10 after two quarters of play. Here in the season finale on the Hilltop. Back for the final 30 minutes after this break. Joe's Catering, family owned since 1953. With four newly remodeled catering facilities throughout the Ohio Valley, Undo's can accommodate banquets from 25 to 700 guests. Undo's caters weddings, picnics, corporate events, holiday events, and job site drop-offs for the construction and oil and gas industry. Call 304-233-5566 today. Undo! Pride is our main. BSV tip of the day, your bank should have a good rewards program. Casasa Tunes gives you rewards for iTunes, Google Play, and Amazon, depending on how you use your checking account. That's Casasa Tunes at Belmont Savings Bank.
guys don't care. Hey. Yeah.
Back here on the hilltop for the second half. Frostburg State got out in front 21-10 in the opening two quarters. Scored on the first two drives. And the Hilltopper defense stepped up, but a defensive score for the Bobcats put them at 21. Hilltopper scored, touched down on the opening drive, and then followed that with a 31-yard field goal from Justin Kaplan. Coach, what you see in that first half? Well, I think you just summed it up. Uh, it was an offensive showcase in that first quarter. Both teams on the first four drives of the game moved the ball. But to give West Liberty credit, their defense really stepped up in that second quarter, but um, and it's called the announcer's jinx. We talked in the pregame about keys of the game, and I said, obviously, you just can't turn the ball over, especially plays that lead to points. And they get the strip sack and uh, get a touchdown off of it. And it's pretty much, you know, the deciding score in this game to this point. It was 14 to 10, and both teams playing well. Yeah, if you look at some of the first half stats, the Bobcats commanded the rushing game over 100 yards at 107 on 20 attempts, while West Liberty had 19 attempts, only 439 yards on the ground. Through the air, though, the stats are flipped. West Liberty 101 yards, and Frostburg State just 30. And that's the thing. It's just it's not a great day to pass the football, and it's more of the wind than the rain. Uh, it's still a, a light drizzle out there, but it is cold. I just went out at the VIP section to say hello to a couple people, and it's not a great day to play football. Hilltoppers get the opening kickoff of this second half after winning the toss and deferring. Sean Stevens and Ben Turner are deep. Kick goes to Stevens. Caught at the six. Makes a man miss. And past the 20. Right around the 25 ran out. It's pretty good kick coverage, but Stevens did a nice job of making the one guy miss right there and picked up an extra five yards, so starting at the 25, but still a lot of football left to be played. 21-10 game, and let's see if West Liberty can mount a scoring drive right here off the bat. Garcia in the first half, 101 yards, 9 of 16, had one interception, and then was sacked and fumbled for the Bobcats score. Play action, looking for the slant, incomplete, missed high. Intended receiver, <coughs> Jerome Harris. It's a play that's kind of been the bread and butter of the West Liberty offense for a lot of the season. And we were just talking also in a pregame, last week was a season high in total offense, uh, north of 400 yards. It was a good bounce back from a season low performance in Pembroke. But you know what's crazy about that Pembroke is a short pass there for two or three yards. Pembroke had less yards than West Liberty that day. <laughs> yeah, it was the, uh, the red zone chances was the kryptonite for the Hilltoppers. They led in pretty much every offensive stack category. But yeah, I, put it on and the I, was telling, I was telling our commissioner that. I said, did you see the stats on the game? You know, we held them to about 200 yards of total offense and lost about 21 points. Garcia back to pass, flushed out right. Now will take it himself. Pass the sticks for the first down and up near the 44-yard line. He's been pretty good with his legs this season, too. I remember down at the Glenville game, he was doing it through the air and on his legs. In that first half down there. Second leading rusher on the team, 246 yards on the season is Garcia as he floats one out for Bobber. It's bobbled and he holds on. That was uh, 
That was a great throw there. Fade down the sideline and Bobber took a pretty good hit there and bobbled it, but he did uh, recapture it. Wimbish right at it up the middle. Still plugging ahead and a gain of nine on first down. And this is what I'm talking about, this sport. The, the momentum changes and West Liberty here gets this opening kickoff and have quickly marched from the 25 down to almost the Frostburg 25 in less than two minutes. Looking for Harvey, touchdown. Harvey, touchdown. Hilltoppers. It's a perfectly thrown ball. Right out of the gates in the second half. Charge all the way down the field. Garcia to Harvey to cap it off. And it's 21-16 with an extra point pending. Well, that's what the doctor ordered. Minute 55, 75 yard drive. And it's put through a four point game. Hilltoppers out of the locker room, find the end zone. Disasters happen. Pick the team that takes care of them all. Powered by offices in Wheeling, Morgantown, and Pittsburgh. Panhandle Cleaning and Restoration is ready to handle any size emergency at a moment's notice. We have the right people, knowledge, and equipment to respond 24 hours a day. I'm Roger Wiley. When disaster strikes your home or business, tell your insurance provider you prefer the restoration company the Hilltoppers call. Panhandle Cleaning and Restoration. What are you working for? Do you want to pursue your athletic potential while earning a degree that will benefit you for a lifetime? Do you want to play at the highest level in your sport? Do you want to be a champion? That's what the 12 proud members of the Mountain East Conference are advancing toward every day. Providing opportunities and pursuing excellence. The Mountain East Conference. Hilltoppers score to open the half. Rashawn Harvey, 26 yard catch from Rudy Garcia. As you said, six plays, 75 yards. To open the half. Now Frostburg State will get the chance. So West Liberty in each half, first possession scores. And the special teams with a good stop. Sean Stevens on it right away. Puts the Frostburg State Bobcats at their furthest backfield position to start off a kickoff today. Yeah, we had the two kickoffs that went out of bounds, and then we squibbed one, and they brought it out to, I think, a 38-yard line on that one. So you're correct. Graham Walker it's four for eight for 30 yards in the first half. Starts the second with a completion. A lot of cushion there on that first down pass, but a great tackle. Tremaine Earl with his second catch of the day for Frostburg State. Play blown dead. False start against Frostburg. <laughs> and that helps. You know, a team that runs the ball pretty effectively. You get them into second and long. And after that six yard catch to open the drive, it's right back. Pretty much where they started. <laughs> Handoff up the middle. There's a hole. Maxwell 
for the first down and more up to the 44. He's been pretty good today. The half, he had 72 yards rushing. That was a big gain there. To Maxwell again, bounces out left side. Past a couple hilltoppers. Ball comes loose but goes out of bounds. And there's also a flag on the play. Flag was back at the 46 of the hilltopper end. Pretty much first and ten. <laughs> Couple costly penalties early in this second half against Frostburg. You know, it's been a unusual day for them running the football. Maxwell, it's like they do a great job of sealing the edge, and he goes untouched for these 15, 20-yard runs, or West Liberty stacks him up and. This time it's Aaron bouncing out to the right, just short of the first down stick. Into Hilltopper territory at the 47, second down and one. I don't know if I ever did give an update to West Liberty women's basketball team. Carly McCutcheon free throw with .6 seconds left in double overtime, and they claim a 108-107 win over Mercyhurst. Second down run goes for the first down. Maxwell. Good tandem backfield for Frostburg State. Maxwell and Aaron. Maxwell now over 100 yards, 105 in the game on 11 attempts. There's Maxwell again, tripped up for a gain of two. This would be a great place here. West Liberty's got to get a stop here. <clears throat> kind of in that four down territory again. Two receivers at the top of the screen. Play action. Hit as he throws. Maxwell gets it off. Slippery yeah. brought the pressure late. <laughs> he was lucky to get that one off, but uh, that's the third time one of those plays have happened today. There was the wounded duck early in the game, and then they almost picked six by Sean Stevens, and then that one he got drilled, but a uh, little comeback route, and they moved the chains. Handoff goes to Aaron. Finds a hole and another first down for the Bobcats. It's about the best offensive line I think we've seen this season. Another first down. Let's get that offensive line led by left tackle. Got Lee by D's. Headed to the Reese Senior Bowl later this year. The premier college football all star game. This time Maxwell up the middle. Somehow, toppers need to force a field goal on this drive, keep him out of the end zone. Prosperity State just moving right along, all on the ground.
Seven of the eight plays in this drive have been rushes. There's another one inside the five and knocked out of bounds at the two goes Sean Aaron. <laughs> They've just done a remarkable job at sealing that perimeter. These backs are getting into the secondary almost untouched. First and goal, Frostberg looking to answer the Hilltoppers. Score on the opening drive of the second half into the backfield and stopped. Well, there's one of those big plays. Cheyenne Petaway, the senior safety for the Hilltoppers, finds the backfield and gets the tackle. Petaway, the team leader in tackles this year. Pass right, it's knocked away. Good defense there. Jordan Demas on it for West Liberty. A little surprised they went to the air there. They have had their way on this drive and then much of the first quarter running the football. Big third down and four at the four. Prosperic State spread out. Three receivers on the bottom of the screen, one at the top. Aaron in the backfield. That's huge. And the play clock runs out. It's going to be a delay game. That's huge. So third down and four turns into third down and nine after the delay of game penalty against Frostburg State. Same setup. Three receivers at the bottom, one at the top. Aaron in the backfield. Now the pass across the middle, caught. They They're going to say down. he's down and at the one-inch line. Just inches short. I think West Liberty is saying a ball hit the turf. Chris Wilson on the defense. And centimeters. Adamant that it hit the ground. <laughs> but still was able to get the tackle. Frostburg State offense still out there. Walker comes up under center. He'll sneak it and get the push from the fullback and in. And the sneak and the touchdown. Touchdown, Bobcats. Well, they made it interesting there. West Liberty defense actually came up big, and, of course, they're still claiming that uh, – that pass hit the turf. Graham Walker with just his second rushing touchdown of the year on that QB sneak. And the PAT makes it an 11 point game. Frostburg State answers the Hilltopper score with one of their own. It's 28 17. Here with 6.19 to play in the third quarter. Your bank offers CDs with consistently competitive and higher interest rates. That's what I want. What if unlike other banks, they're normally open more hours? And they don't use high teaser rates on CDs only to lower them later. Isn't that the way all banks should be? And even more, several of their CD accounts have some of the best interest rates. That's money in the bank. The right bank. Open your CD account at Main Street Bank. You deserve a bank this good. The Panhandle Difference. West Banco appreciates our more than 15-year relationship with Panhandle Cleaning and Restoration. 
they're a one-stop shop that handles all of our work. Whether it's quick projects or whether it's a project that might involve multiple locations, multiple branch locations, we appreciate the relationship. Doesn't matter what we throw at them or how complex it is, they get it done quickly and they do a great job. Frostburg State answers the Hilltopper score, marching all the way down the field. Capped off by Graham Walker, QB sneak. After uh, Jordan Marcucci catch brought him to the one yard line on third down, the fourth down sneak. And extra point makes it back to an 11 game. Frostburg answers the West Liberty scoring drive. Let's see if West Liberty can do it again. So the start of the game and the second half, both teams score on their opening drives. Kick almost goes over the head of Stevens. He grabs it though at the four, races up, finds a hole, past the kicker at the 50 and is taken down. Sean Stevens with a big time return. I tell you, it was an impressive return, but the most impressive part of that was the catch on the kickoff. That was not an easy catch. Here's kind of a funny story, Jacob, before we get out and snap the ball. We had uh, legendary Darren Banks, who was a DB here and is in our Hall of Fame and led the nation in interceptions, one of the all-time leading uh, interceptors in NCAA history. And he used to beg Coach Wiley to play offense. Beg him. And I'm sure uh, he probably gets the same thing from Sean Stevens with his speed and uh, hands. A little wildcat here. Face the pass is Wimbish and now takes it up the middle. And seeing that a lot today. It's fourth or fifth time they've gone to that formation. Wimbish again gets the first down. Well, toppers are on the move again. Offense is coming out of the locker room with some firepower. Wimbish for the third straight time. Decent first down run. Yeah, and that was there was really nothing there, and he kind of spun and lunged himself backwards and ended up getting positive yardage there, about four yards, maybe even five. Second and six for the Hilltoppers. Garcia play action, rolls out left. Tries to get past the defender. Stopped right at the line of scrimmage. I like that decision though, not throwing back across your body on the scramble in the middle of the field, just uh, gain a yard or so and live to, we're in two down territory anyway, down 11 points. Now Wimbish, barreling through right at the stick. See where they mark him down. It's third and five. He got every bit of five yards. Wow. Looks like they marked him. You're going to go short, I'd, fourth down. I might call for a measurement there. Just going to be quickly sneaked by Garcia. And Garcia. I mean, he had to get like an inch. I'm a little surprised that they didn't measure that to begin with. 
I think they felt guilty that they didn't <laughs> give it to him. Um, and they give it to him there. Yeah, that was probably the least effective quarterback sneak we've ran in that situation, which we talked about that back in the first quarter. But, uh, but he, he got, needed an inch, and he got uh, – I actually gave him a better spot than that. Moved the chains all that matters, and first down at the 27-yard line for the Hilltoppers. Hit as he throws. It'll hit the turf. And second down upcoming for West Liberty. Getting close to probably in Kaplan field goal range at this point with it being a two-score game, but obviously the Hilltoppers want a touchdown here. Wimbish on the run. Gets down to the 20-yard line. Third and short. Another good run. Third down, another handoff to Wimbish. He'll get the first. And the Hilltoppers moving down in the red zone. Nice job by the West Liberty offensive line. Moving the chains again. To Wimbish again, why not? Inside the 10, just chipping away down the field. Under two to play in the third quarter. Handoff Wimbish stopped immediately. Loss of one to the ten. Third down and seven. Talk about a fast moving quarter. This one. Well, Celebrity got the opening kickoff. Scored in six plays, minute fifty-five. Frostburg has a long drive. West Liberty answers with the long drive, and we're almost exhausted this quarter. Third and seven, trips at the top, Harvey alone at the bottom. Garcia, Garcia keeps it himself, puts his head down and is tackled at the six, short of the line to gain. Is this four down territory? Oh yeah, I think so. Meaning Frostburg has just ran the football so efficiently, eating up chunks of a quarter. You know, you got a really good kicker, and it would cut it to a two-score game, but you probably need a touchdown here. Fourth and three. Let's see if they got a play drawn up here. Garcia to Wimbish. Nowhere to go. Frostburg State will take over on downs. Frostburg with difference in the game is two red zone defensives. They held West Liberty to a field goal on West Liberty's second drive of the game and force uh, turnover on downs here in the, in the red zone. Potential good spot for the Hilltopper defense. Try and make something happen. The first play Goes for about a yard on the handoff. That'll end up, that'll do the quarter. Looks like 
So each side scores a touchdown in the third quarter, and we'll head to the final 15 minutes with Frostburg State ahead 28-17 here on the Mountain East Digital Network. They'll probably never know about his thousands of hours of on-the-job training. Go, Daddy. Or that he spent as much time in the classroom as someone with a master's degree. You and I know he's one of the experts when it comes to electricity. Part of a team committed to doing the job right. They call him Dad. You call him the electrician right down the street. IBEW, the power professionals in your neighborhood. The Panhandle Difference. I immediately called Panhandle Cleaning and Restoration to see if they could clean and restore my home. Not only did they do that, but they even made it more beautiful than it was before the fire. If everyone ever has a tragedy like ours, I highly recommend you call Panhandle Cleaning and Restoration. Fourth quarter underway, flip sides, and now on our left, Frostburg State will charge the second down run is stopped, and it'll be third and six. This could be a big stop for the Hilltopper defense. Yes, it would be. Maxwell in the backfield, alongside Walker. Walker, sacked! And Zach. Zach Dixon! No one in front of him, and slams Walker down at the one. Yeah, that, uh, I would not want to be their quarterback right there. That was pretty much untouched right off the edge. Definitely everything legal about the hit. And I'm surprised he held on to the ball. I mean, he got drilled. That's You don't see hits like that that often. That was probably one of the hardest hits we've seen this season. That's, uh, that's a candidate for the Belmont Savings uh, Bank play of the game. That This has a chance to flip this game really quick. Koontz, not much room in the end zone, gets the punt off on a line to Stevens, catches at the 45, racing in, gets it back to the 31, where the Hilltoppers will set up. Looking to get back within one score. It's a great, great starting field position, West Liberty at the 30, down 11, still a two-score game, 13-31 left. And we said West Liberty only had the ball two times in that quarter because it was a fast-moving quarter. Six-play touchdown drive the first time. Methodical march, lost it on downs at the, around the 10-yard line there on the second drive. So very short field, and they're going to the Wildcat again. Official blows the play dead. Coach Wiley will take the timeout. Think they'll stay with the Wildcat here out of the timeout? Um, you lose the the surprise of it. You know, they'll think, are they going back to the Wildcat? So I don't know. Uh, it's been effective today when they've used it five or six times. Wimbish, the Hilltopper in the backfield on that Wildcat. It's, he's had 75 yards today on 22 rushes. One score, average of 3.4 carry. On the other side, Maxwell up over 100 for the Bobcats at 108 and just 14 carries and even split of the running duties with Sean Aaron. And this doesn't surprise me. They vacated that play call. And Let's 
Now hand it to Wimbish. To a crowd of Bobcats. Gain of a little over one yard. Garcia looking to the sideline for the call. Second and eight. Sends Griffin in motion. Play action. He's able to get it away and slipping and falling. Before the ball can come to him, Titus Goldson, the intended receiver. Boy, that was unfortunate, Garcia miraculously escaped that. It looks like he was going to take a sack and actually made a pretty accurate throw. And on a wet turf, the receiver uh, feet goes out from under him, and it's now third and eight. Big third down for the Hilltoppers. Garcia, another play action. Looking for the slant just high. Jerome Harris. Jerome Harris, intended receiver. And fourth down. The offense looks like it's staying out on the field. Yeah, this would be a, where's the ball at? 45-yard field goal. Down 11. Let's see what they dial up here. Fourth down, Garcia, back to pass. Gets it off and a flag comes out. <laughs> pass interference on the Bobcats. And the Hilltopper drive will stay alive. Let's see if that's a spot foul there. And it's a huge call. West Liberty converts on fourth and uh, eight by a penalty. AJ, a penalty. AJ Felton called for the PI for the Bobcats. It's first and 10 at the 14 for West Liberty. Empty backfield, Garcia takes it himself up the middle. Garcia. There's a designed run, pretty good play call. Luke Freeman trips him up before he can break loose further and it is second down and three. Another empty backfield for Garcia. And another designed run. A bounce out left. Inside the pylon and touchdown. Rudy Garcia. Coach Wiley is going for two here. Love the play call. Two designed quarterback runs. Celebrity finds the end zone. Cuts it to a 28-3, to 28-23 game. And the Hilltoppers are going for two to try to cut it to a three-point game. Maybe the Wildcat. Garcia is out there. Play clock's down to five now. To Garcia. Option, pitch to Wimbish. Stuffed right away. And it'll stay a five point game. I like the call. You know, we jokingly, I tell Coach Wally all the time, I love the shovel pass. Just don't know if it was executed that well there. And the Hilltoppers get the score but can't convert the two points. Brings it to 28-23. Frostburg State leading here in the regular season finale on the Hilltop. The oldest institution of higher education in the state of West Virginia 
We appreciate the impact we have on our community and beyond. From the students we serve, to the faculty and staff we employ, to the tens of thousands of graduates we've sent beyond the hilltop. You can find a part of West Liberty University anywhere you go. We strive to strengthen our community because that's who we are. We are the future. We are West Liberty University. Tomorrow's innovators, teachers, caregivers, researchers, leaders, and creators all have one thing in common. They started out just like you. At West Liberty University, you are the focus. This is a place where you will gain the skills, knowledge, and confidence to change your life and the world around you. It all starts here, with you. Visit westliberty.edu to start your journey. It's all here at West Liberty University. Hilltoppers, get back on the board. Jacob, we got a football game here. <laughs> This is a game. Hilltoppers haven't led yet, but staying right with the Bobcats. Down by five here in the fourth quarter as the kickoff return goes across midfield. And that's not what you want to see happen. And there's a penalty. And a late flag comes out as well. Now, if that's against the toppers, that is a crucial Of the kickoffs today, Frostburg State has set up some pretty good field positions. We'll be inside topper territory pending a penalty here. Maybe a sideline warning. You know, those guys got to be back. Not just a warning, but interference after the contact with a player. And brings Frostburg State all the way to the 25 to start the drive. Sean Aaron stuffed at the line. The opening play of the drive. Sir Xena credit with the stop. It's his sixth tackle of the day. Still over 11 minutes left in this quarter. Five point, five point cushion. There's a fumbled snap. Well, that helps. <laughs> and Prosperity State, it's all the way back to the 38. And that wasn't the quarterback in there either. That was. Remember, he took that shot on the goal line. Now, right here, I think the key is when West Liberty had him in a similar on a third and 25, the running back runs for 16 yards. Let's get a stop here and keep him out of field goal range. Sean Aaron. 44-yard field goal if they elect to, elect to kick this. It's fourth down. It is Isaiah Lester out for Frostburg State at quarterback. The redshirt sophomore in for Graham Walker. After Walker took the big hit from Dixon last possession. Offense still out there. Fourth down, 14 to go at the 29. Yeah. 
stiff wind blowing too. It's probably another reason maybe why they didn't elect to try to make this an eight point game. Lester, first pass of the day is dropped on the diving attempt and the Hilltoppers will take over. West Liberty's first legitimate chance to take a lead in this game. They've always been down at least seven. Jermaine Earl had the diving attempt for Frostburg State on Lester's first pass. Just couldn't get it. Yeah, I don't would that even been enough? I couldn't tell where he Yeah, because he was with the dive, he couldn't get up at all and I Yeah, think I, I think it might, it, have been, <laughs> might have been short. <coughs> Excuse me, it may have been short of the chains anyway, but West Liberty nevertheless gets the stop and nine thirty seven left to have a chance to take a lead here. Hilltoppers are coming off a seven play, 30 yard drive over a minute and a half. Now we'll start with it at the, at their own 29. Empty backfield. Three receivers at the top, two at the bottom for West Liberty. Rolling out right is Garcia. Gets it away and throws it short. And a penalty. Flag on the play. I think it's going to go against Frostburg for running into Garcia. And I liked Rudy's decision there again, not forcing... Not forcing the football down the field when you don't have anything and Alex just to throw it away, but West Liberty picks up the 15 yard penalty for roughing the passer and they're already out on the 44 yard line. After just two penalties in the first half for Frostburg State, they're up to six in the second half. It's a motion penalty against West Liberty. There's been a couple big penalties for the Bobcats too. The, the pass interference, moving the Hilltoppers on fourth down. And that one there brought Hilltoppers now at the 39 after the five yard false start penalty. Wimbish. Up the middle, gets the five back from the penalty. It'll be second and 10. Play clock down to 10. Garcia back to pass. Out route to the left, caught by Harvey. Third and five. I like that call too. Third catch of the day for Harvey. Now third down handoff to Wimbish. Breaks a tackle and will get the first down. Big time run. Shaking off the defender for Wimbish. Yeah, yards after contact there and another nice little hole to initially get through and <clears throat> West Liberty's driving. <laughs> Go.
Garcia swallowed up for the sack. Dylan Culpin for the Bobcats gets to Garcia. And it'll be second and long just inside midfield. Let's see what they could dial up here. Do they elect just try to get seven or eight of that back to make it a more manageable third down? Remember, West Liberty did use one of their timeouts on the last drive. Now Garcia will run it again. Nowhere to go. Just a one-yard gain, third down. Be at the 47-yard line, third and 15. Still may be in two-down territory, get some of it back. An unblocked rush from Luke Freeman, and Garcia just has to throw it away quickly. West Liberty brings punt unit out. <laughs> Matt Curry looking to pin the Bobcats. The third punt of the day. That's a good one. Bounces at the nine and rolls inside the five. Stevens downs it at the three. Matt Curry. Well, the special teams did their job there. Effective punt, covered, downed. And the Hilltoppers down five with 6.44 left. We'll attempt to get another big stop here and give themselves a chance to win the football game. Lester out for the Bobcats again. Handoff goes to Aaron. Bouncing out left. Gets the first down to the 15. That's a play that has worked time and time again. They've just been able to seal that edge on that left side. Aaron up over 90 yards now for Frostburg State. Him and Maxwell, two of the top 10 rushers in the MEC. It's Aaron again, and another good first down run. Frostburg State quickly out. They'll be using pretty much all this time on every snap. Aaron out left side. Another first down for Frostburg State. Under five minutes to play. 
Frostburg State in no rush, leading by five. This one's Maxwell. Stopped a gain of two. See if West Liberty can come up big here and force a third and long. Josh Maxwell in the backfield. He'll take the handoff and left side again in the first down for Osberg. Well, they know where their bread and butter is and they have gone to it time and time again. <clears throat> for Mountaineer fans out there, West Virginia beat Oklahoma today. Last second field goal to capture a 23-20. It's a big win, win for them. First and 10 at the Hilltop are 37. Hand off to Aaron to the left and across the 40. Coach Wiley not using the timeout, which I agree with in this situation. Let's see what happens on second down. Lester in the shotgun, play clock down to three. Gets the snap off. And the stop immediately by the Hilltoppers and there's the timeout. Let's keep it here, Jacob, and let's see. Uh, third and six, 231. West Liberty has one timeout left. And the big decision if you're the Frostburg coaching staff, and they've had a they've been effective running the football, but do you do anything play action wise and take the risk of throwing an incompletion and West well, Liberty doesn't have to burn that last time out. But of course in college football you can't say it enough with the clock stopping after uh, every first down to reset the chains. Two minutes is a lot of time. If I had to predict the play, I'm going to say a rush left. <laughs> well, that's that's pretty much where they've gone. Pretty much uh, on every one of their scoring drives, it's been left, 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 left. Ball carrying duties have been split up pretty evenly by Frostburg State. As Maxwell is up at 110 yards, Aaron nearing 100. Two thirty-one to play in the game. Frostburg State ahead by five, third and six. Of course, they do have a backup quarterback in as well, so. Isaiah Lester in the shotgun for Frostburg. Back to pass. Looking left. It's caught, but it's short. Well short. Now the key is West Liberty saying the ball hit the turf, which I don't think it did, but that would have been huge if it would have because they could have saved the timeout. Yeah, yeah. saved the timeout, but... Uh, So the Hilltoppers take the final timeout. It'll be fourth and two at the 45. Well, this will be uh, 
any chance that Frostburg's coaching staff has the guts to go for it here? Season finale, you never know what's in store, right? <laughs> well, and again, when you've got an All-American tackle and you've pretty much had your way running the football for most of this game, it wouldn't be the craziest thing. It happens way more in, in college football today than it, it's been at any point in history with analytics and things. And it does look like they're going to bring their offense back out on the field now. This may be one of these hard count things. Or no, it is their punting. So just don't jump off sides. So. Yeah. <laughs> and run into the kicker. Yeah. Dan Kuntz back to punt it again for Frostburg State. He's had a couple good ones today. Sean Stevens. Back to return for the Hilltoppers. Also had a couple good returns today. Oh. And that punt shanked. <laughs> wow. Well, what a way to end a football season. You know, it's been a little disappointing, especially when West Liberty got off to the good start this year. But playing a team that's five points away from an undefeated season, and uh, you could call them a – Regionable, reputable team. And here West Liberty's 55 yards away with 216 left uh, to steal a win in a season finale. Two minute offense is out. Garcia. How about a two minute, 16 minute offense? <laughs> 16. Uh, those 16 seconds, we'll probably need them. First pass goes to Griffin across the middle. Hilltoppers will hurry up. Just short of the first down. Eight yard gain. Yeah, just give yourself a chance to get lined up. You just can't afford motion penalties here. Now Garcia loses the ball. Let's see who's on top of it. And Frostburg State gets the recovery. They'll just be able to kneel it out. Yeah, West Liberty was zero timeouts left, and it was a game effort today, meaning did enough to put themselves in a position to steal one, but the turnover bug continues to bite the toppers and you know anything that as you look back on this season now that this is the finale it's pretty evident it's just the untimely turned over turnovers and the points when your defense is not on the field and we just go back all the way back to that first podcast. That was one of the things that Coach Wiley said coming into the season, that a key would be you got to take care of the football and you just can't let teams score when your defense isn't on the field. And it happened again today. It's the difference in the final margin, but just turnovers in general. And uh, I didn't look at the stats this week. West Liberty was leading the country and – Turnovers, are they still there? Do you know? They're right around, yeah, the, the top or the bottom of the, the board, I should say. And it's just, uh, you know, we don't know why it happens. There's no rhyme or reason to it, but three more today, one interception and two timely fumbles, untimely fumbles. Out of the timeout, Frostburg State in victory formation. You talk about a fast football game. Two hours and about 43 minutes. Yeah, for listeners out there, as Frostburg attempts to run this clock out, a uh, reminder 
The West Liberty men's basketball team is back in action tonight, playing the second game of a doubleheader in the MEC PSAC uh, Conference Challenge. West Liberty uh, started his season with a convincing right around 20-point win last night over PSAC foe Shepard. And they've got uh, Cal PA, who made it to the regional final last year. So if you get a chance, tip off scheduled for eight. And Wheeling and Shepard plays the first game at six o'clock. Both games will be right here on the Mountain East Digital Network. Check out HilltopperSports.com this week uh, to see if the volleyball teams are going to be fortunate enough to get an at-large bid. And Jacob, thank you for stepping in. Your second game is play-by-play, -play and you did an admirable job. Appreciate that. It was a pleasure to broadcast this game and wish for a better result for the Hilltoppers, but season finale, it'll, clock will run out. Frostburg State wins it 28-28. 23 over the Hilltoppers as Frostburg State moves to 8 and 3 on the season while West Liberty ends it 4 and 7 overall. Coach, just overall. Well, football season. again, if we talked about today's game was just kind of a microcosm of what we've witnessed. Uh, there was times when West Liberty appeared to be a pretty darn good football team. Um, had a chance to win today against a, a really good team uh, to wrap it up, but you just cannot turn it over at the level that they did and and expect success. So um, frustrating, but there's some talent there. And that'll do it for the Hilltopper football season. Thank you for joining all the home games and following along on HilltopperSports.com and the Mountain East Digital Network. For Coach Lynn Allum, I'm Jacob Davey signing off from the Hilltop. Frostburg State wins it 28-23 in the season finale.